we share an, an Afro uh, descendant uh, heritage. And so we are connected that way. We share histories of colonialism and histories of struggle and we are connected that way. So when I think of my identity, I like to think as more than a Dominican, as an Afro-Caribbean, because it kind of encompasses all the things that connect us more than those things that divide us. I think it's different to be a Dominican in the Dominican Republic and to be a Dominican in New York City or being a Dominican in the United States. There's obviously the aspect of immigration and all the different factors that, that brings into your conditions of living uh, where you are. Um, whereas being in the Dominican Republic is very much about nationality. <laughs> it's about uh, the idea, right, of patriotism. You're proud of that um, as a nation, you know, but here, because there are so many different immigrants, right, from different places, whether it is uh, Caribbean or uh, Asia, or you are, you are in conversations with these different communities. And so your identity kind of becomes more fluid. You know, I do believe that identity is fluid and, and, and it's in constant change and, and we're people in process, you know, um, because what it meant to be Dominican 30 years ago is not what it means to be Dominican today, whether you're here or over there, you know? And so, um, the Dominican-ness to me is something that is in process. For example, I was talking to someone earlier this week about the cultural renaissance of the Heights, right? So right now you have a whole bunch of folks that are coming out and they're artists and they're doing photography and they're doing, you know, um, visual art paintings, uh, poetry, writing. Um, and they're writing from a different perspective because being a Dominican in New York City has obviously changed um somewhat you know uh with generations so as we continue to advance as people and i don't mean advance like in the economic or social way but i mean just like in our experiences um we will definitely become another type of dominican you know so i think it's it's very fluid i identify myself as a black dominican woman you know afro-caribbean if you want to look at it at the, the like diaspora uh, perspective and, but it took certain generations for that to happen. Like the Dominican of probably like my parents' um, era, right? Um, because of what it meant to be Dominican at some point in the Dominican Republic, and I'm talking about the dictatorship um, and being black and how black was being connected to being Haitian and therefore less than human. And therefore you were subjected to have a, kill you like there there is a reality of the parsley massacre right that took place within the dictatorship um in the dominican republic and if so if you were haitian you were again less than human you were a slave to the dominican republic and so the idea was if you're black then you're haitian and people dis dis decided to detach themselves from that that nobody want nobody wants to be black in the dominican republic and i'm talking about the general scope so for my mom who's dark skin, the idea was, I, I'm Indian. Well, we all know Indian is not a race. Like, you, that's not a race, you know? Um, but she identified herself as Indian, but she didn't want to be identified as black, right? Even though her mom had a darker shade of skin color, you know? And if you, see my, if you would have seen my grandmother next to a Haitian man or woman, you would think that sh she was Haitian too. And so... Um, the levels of racism in the Dominican Republic are so deep uh, that it's, it's, it's very difficult for someone in the Dominican community, and I'm talking about over there and over here, to see themselves as black. Because they've been taught, we've been taught, that black is something you don't want to be, right? Um, we have, I, well at least I have, for me, my process of understanding myself as a black Dominican is in relations to other struggles like for example like growing up in the united states and being exposed to to what racism looks like right and the histories of of organizations like the black panther party like the young lord party um the struggles of puerto ricans living in the united states and what it meant to them to come into slums to ghettos and be discriminated against because they were puerto ricans because they were darker because they spoke spanish um 
knowing that history made sense to me as as a as a second generation immigrant who had an accent because my parents spoke to me in Spanish because I had the texture of a hair that people call pelo malo that you have to straighten your hair for it to be nice and maybe go to the salon every week and lighten it up so that you look lighter so you look for for a way of bettering your race right so in all that dynamic um you're constantly fighting with who you are and I'm, I'm speaking for myself um and in that tension i found myself where it was kind of like why do i have to go to the salon every week i don't want to why should i not be comfortable in my own skin um and so the idea of claiming myself as a black dominican although it might seem crazy to some people <laughs> It is who I am, and it's not crazy. And I think when we start identifying ourselves as such, then we start deconstructing those levels of racism that we've been taught through history. I mean, um, in conversations with my grandmother, dark, black woman, uh, she would say things like, and she was really conscious, really nice person, but what she was taught, uh, she only went to like a fourth grade level of formal education. She was taught, well, you know, Haitians came in and invaded us and raped the woman and, and did this and did that. And everything that was done was negative. And I would often ask her, um, in the work that you did in the countryside, in El Campo, in the fields, who are you working with? And she would say, well, Haitians. And I would say, was there any animosity between you? No, never. So the construct, like the, the, the theoretical construct that she had was something that was formed by a system, an institution that obviously was a racist one, that was a xenophobic one. But as a person, you still have those relationships that are warm relationships, that are com like based on com um, camaraderie, right? Um, that sometimes you treat people as family, but then if it like right now what's going going on in the Rep Dominican Republic right now is the legitimizing of racism with the sentencing that took place last month um it's all right for you to be racist and xenophobic and so it's opened up a Pandora's box of people who were probably connecting to Haitians in in ways of like oh they're we're, they're working with me or they're working for me and uh we have a relationship now all of a sudden it's like well i don't need to have a relationship with you because you're less than me right so um in that sense the issue of race becomes a very delicate issue that nobody wants to address right and when i think about that i think about the reality of immigrants here as a second generation immigrant who's seen her parents work two and three jobs um, and people welcoming the labor, but not wanting the immigrant. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like you welcome the stranger, the foreigner, and they come in and they do all the jobs that are obviously created for people to stay within that particular space. Uh, the farmer, <laughs> the nannies, uh, the hairdresser, the this, the that, but that's, I want their labor. I don't want to deal with them. I don't want to get to know them. I don't want to know their experiences, their realities. And when it's time to vote immigration reform or amnesty, I'm going to vote against that because I don't want it. And yet I want their labor the benefits me, you know, which is what's exactly what's going on in the Dominican Republic. And it's it's crazy because it's happening uh, in the context or it happened in the context, the whole process of the sen sentencing um, where we are commemorating the Parsley Massacre in the Dominican Republic. So we've digressed so far as to the dictatorship. And that tells us how much uh, impact in history and in our beings a uh, long dictatorship had in forming and informing and socializing and condition, conditioning us to think that we are better than people uh, who are, first of all, our neighbors because we share the same island. And second of, all, second of all, people who come from the same African diaspora as we do, because we are a black nation. The Dominican Republic is a black nation, whether we want to accept it or not, our, the population there is black. You know, it's dark skinned, but there, there's obviously a lot of internalized racism that, that we need to start deconstructing. And I feel like as a second generation immigrant to Dominican parents here, 
Dominicans here, right? That second generation, that third generation, that fourth generation um, has a responsibility, you know, uh, of first educating ourselves of that history and doing work to be able to eradicate that the levels of racism and xenophobia that exist back home, you know? And so it's a, it's a delicate issue for all of us, you know, but it's something that we need to address.